Hey guys, Serac here, and I'm back with another budget deck for you. And the deck I've brought for you today is my budget Orcust deck. Now, Orcust was one of my was one of the decks that I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh with last year. I played the Lunar Light variant until Tiger got banned, unfortunately. Um, so, and Harp got banned as well. So, yeah, into the deck profile. So we've got three copies of Orcus Nightmare. This is your main Orcus play starter. It sets up your graveyard and just allows you access to so many of the different cards you have in your deck. Um, it's really, really useful. Yeah, just need three. Um, don't forget that it does also give a little bit of attack as well. It's, again, it's not always relevant, but occasionally you'd think, Oh, I can use Nightmare here to get some extra attack. Especially with cards like Gizmech and so on that can give quite a sizable boost of 800 essentially for free. Then have two copies of Symbol Skeleton. This is your sort of main extender for interaction during your opponent's turn as it special summons any Orcus monster from your graveyard. All the Orcus monsters, when you use their effect lock you into dark monsters. So this will generally be used for reviving Dingirsu in your opponent's turn to get material for IP Mascarena and to get a send with Dingirsu's effect. We have two copies of World Legacy World Wand. This is obviously one of your main ways of recycling your Banished Orcus Monsters back to the field. It's a World Legacy card, which is important for Lib. Um, and it's, again, another high-level monster for use with Nightmare if you need that extra bit of attack. Now we get into the engine of the deck. So to begin with, we have the Scrap Engine. So, three Scrap Recycler, one Scrap Golem. I will do a small combo tutorial in the future on how the Scrap engine and how the Machina engine works. Because they can be a little bit unintuitive at times um, to how they... Um, all the interactions and the way they work. But essentially, Scrap Recycler is a non-once-per-turn ability to send any machine monster from your deck to your graveyard. And Scrap Golem is a non-once-per-turn ability to special summon any scrap monster from your graveyard. So, essentially, the combos with Scrap Drag with scrap Wyvern involve you looping Scrap Recycler and Scrap Golem to send three potential cards to your graveyard, which allows you to go into your Orcus combos. We then get into the Machina por portion of the deck. And we have one copy of Machina Metal Cruncher. This is used for searching your scrap recycler. Um, it obviously says randomly adds one. You just search three copies of scrap recycler, so you're guaranteed to get it. We have one copy of Machina Megaform. This is a lone fire blossom for Machina monsters. And you use it with one copy of Machina Irradiator, which can discard a Machina monster, and then you can special summon it. And then you can immediately essentially swap its place with a Machina monster in your graveyard. In this case, it'll be Megaform. And then one copy of Machina Fortress, as it allows you to get Orcus cards like Orcus Nightmare out of your hand. It's free link fodder. And it's just a 2500 attack beta as well. And it's searchable in the deck. So then we get on to just a few more one-offs in the deck. We have one copy of the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. This is for your Bardiche plays. I'm only running Phantom Knights of Silent Boots because A, their price has gone up a little bit due to the new Phantom Knight support, and be, so Fogblade is now nearly £7 a copy. So I decided to cut down on the Phantom Knight bits, 
And I decided to choose Silent Boots because even if you can't use Bardiche's effect, if this is stranded in your hand, then at least you can still special summon this as an extra body on the field. Which is why I went with this one over Ancient Cloak. One Armageddon Knight helps set up the graveyard, is a nice normal summon to have. One copy of Crystron Rosenix. This is one of the cards you're sending with Scrap Recycler. Um, by summoning it, you make one Crystron token. Well, by sending it to the graveyard and then banishing it, you make a Crystron token that you can then link off with your copy of Scrap Recycler to make your Scrap Wyvern plays. And finally, for the normal monster, the monster component of the deck, well, pre-hand traps, we have one copy of Gizmekarochi. This is one of the cards that really, really helps you win the grind game. It obviously is a quick effect summon, so it's free material for IP Mascarena. It is a free summon because it's just banishing cards from the top of your deck, and it can summon from the graveyard, so you can dump it there with Nightmare. And it's also removal that's, again, really, really useful in the deck, just at the cost of a couple of cards in your extra deck. And you obviously run Top Logic's Boros in your deck, so this card powers that card up as well by banishing cards from your deck. So now we get into the hand traps. We have three copies of Effect Failure. Um, it's a very, very useful hand trap. It stops lots of things. You know what Effect Failure does at this point. And then we get three copies of Nibiru. Now, I agonised over whether to include Nibiru or not in this deck profile, because Nibiru is still a relatively expensive card at about six, seven pounds a copy. So the reason I decided to include it is because one thing Orcust really, really deals well with well is simplified board states. Because of the way your interactions work, you're summoning, you're using a symbol skeleton to summon your Dingirsu to send a card to the graveyard and then you're making a nightmare and so on. You're doing that essentially every turn and looping through that. And so it means you're really you it's really easy for you to out the token that you give your opponent on their turn as well. And Nibiru just really, really helps with clearing the board and forcing negates that you might struggle to interact with more. So that's why I went for Nibiru. If you can't afford Nibirus, just add some Ghost Ogres or some more power one-off cards and, and so on. Just look at your staples or potentially a solemn package. Cards like that that just really, really help you um, equalize the game state and simplify the game state. The other thing with Nibiru is because you can use all your Orcust effects on their turn, it doesn't matter that you tribute over all of your monsters because you just get them back straight away. So then we have, we get into the spell component of the deck. We have three copies of Machina Redeployment. This is how you start your Machina combo. It's discard any card, so it helps declog your hand if you've got an Orcus Nightmare or something in there. And then you search two Machina monsters, and the ones you're searching are Irradiator and Megaform most of the time. Two copies of World Legacy Succession. It's an extra two copies of Monster Reborn, and Lib fetches it from your deck. So it's very, very good in that regard. One copy of Orchestrated Babel. <coughs> I've got mine's in German, but what this does is it's the card that gives Orcus such good grind game. It lets you play almost all of your Orcus effects on the opponent's turn, um, and therefore allows you to interact with almost everything they do. It's really, really strong. And you can add it back to your hand as well if it's destroyed. We don't need to run more than one because Galatea searches it for us. Two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. This deck hates Mystic Mine with a burning passion. It really, really struggles to out it. And Cosmic Cyclone also helps deal with any of the annoying Eldritch traps and stopping them from floating. One Monster Reborn. 
Same reasoning as World Legacy Succession. It's a free extender. You play a lot out of your graveyard. It allows you to get things like Dingirsu back if you don't have a symbol skeleton in the grave. Um, it's just a very, very good extender. And also, don't neglect that it can also get stuff out of your opponent's graveyard. One on Upstart Goblin. This deck doesn't need to OTK. It doesn't do a big combo play that allows you to push for 8,000 damage, except for some Borrel Sword plays. So the 1,000 life points is essentially negligible. So the free card is nice. One Foolish Burial. Card is self-explanatory. We play out of our graveyard. Then we get into the trap component. So we have one copy of Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine. This is a essentially a free link material that you can use with Bardish. Um, that Bardish can set off its own effect by sending. So Bardish will send your copy of Silent Boots to the graveyard. You'll banish the Silent Boots um, and you'll set this or Fog Blade. You then banish the Silent Boots and set the other one. This can be activated the same turn. So it gives you extra materials for, say, making anything else. Just remember, Bardish can't be used as a link material himself. One copy of Fogblade. This is a way you have of interacting with the opponents. Bardish searches it. It's a very, very useful card. One copy of Machina Overdrive. This allows you to target any machine you control. Most of your deck is machine. Um, and you can get a machine out of your deck. It's very, very easy board presence. Again, for cards like IP Mascarena. And it also has a nice graveyard effect. Um, and allows you to recycle your banished machine monsters. Again, doesn't specify they have to be earth or machina monsters. Just that they're machine monsters. You banish a lot of machine monsters. And draw a card. And then finally, one copy of Orcus Crescendo. Just remember you need to control a link monster, an Orcus link monster to activate this effect. Dingirsu does not count. A number of times you get caught out because you need to have Galatea or Long Gearsu on the field to use Orcus Crescendo. But other than that, it's an Omni Negate you can recycle and search with Galatea. So it's very, very useful to have the one copy. So that's it for the main deck, and now the extra deck. So, to begin with, we have two copies of Dingirsu Orcust of the Evening Star. Now, obviously, this is the card that makes Orcust so resilient and so, can be so frustrating to play against, because, obviously, it allows you to recycle your banished monsters, it allows you to protect your board, and it allows you to send cards to the graveyard without targeting them. And obviously you make it with any of your Orcus Link monsters. Two copies of Galatea the Orcus Automaton. So Galatea allows you to search your Orcus spells and traps. So your Babel and your Crescendo. By shuffling back a banished... Um, monster into banish machine monster into your deck the shuffling back is cost so even if that the effect is negated you still get to shuffle the machine machine monster back in <clears throat> one copy of long gear su long gear su allows you to send link monsters your opponent controls to the graveyard again non-targeting non-destruction removal you can position your Long Gearsu very, very easily to force your opponent into summoning into the zone it points to. So, obviously, like, you can put Galatea in the zone over here, and then you put your Long Gearsu between Galatea, and now it points to the other extra monster zone up here, and Galatea also points to another zone. So, if they... Now, they're essentially forced to summon here at least once, which gives you a form of interaction. We have one copy of Lib. Lib is really, really strong. It can only be link summoned if you have a World Legacy card in your graveyard. That's why we play uh, two copies of World Wand, because we don't want to 
draw one and be locked out of summoning lib until we can unclog our hand. So when it's summoned, we can set one World Legacy card from our deck, so World Le Legacy Succession. So essentially we get to search a monster reborn out of our deck for free. And then if it's sent as a lit ink material, you can shuffle one card on the field to the deck. Again, really, really strong with a card like IP Mascarena. If you can have this in IP Mascarena on the field, you can do some disgusting plays involving making sort of Appaloosas and Unicorns and just getting rid of two of your opponent's cards really, really, really easily. It's a really, really strong card. One copy of Scrap Wyvern. This is your main combo starter. It's what allows you to set your graveyard up so easily. One copy of Rusty Bardish. This is how you set up your Phantom Knight interactions and plays. Essentially with Fog Blades. And... It's really, really easy to summon in this deck. Fortunately, you're not doing anything quite so broken as last time, because as a thought, is now banned. Um, also remember that its effect to destroy cards doesn't have to be on Xyz summon. It's just if any Xyz mon dark Xyz monster is summoned to a zone it points to. So that includes you reviving Dingirsu with any of your revival effects. To pop a card... IP Mascarena, this is m on most of your end boards. It's just really, really useful for making Nightmares, making Appaloosa, and so on in your opponent's turn. One Nightmare Phoenix, because sometimes you need to out back row and you don't have Cosmic Cyclone. One Nightmare Unicorn, because sometimes you just need to out absolutely everything. This is the card you'll generally go into with your IP Mascarena. One copy of Trisbana. Again, sometimes you need to out a load of annoying back row or burn them in time and so on. One copy of Zeroboros. Again, the deck, because it can summon monsters so easily during your opponent's turn, it's really, really easy to trigger your own Zeroboros in this deck. And because you have cards like Gizmek, you banish lots of your Orcus monsters and so on. It can get to absolutely huge levels of attack. And finally, we have one copy of Appaloosa. Self-explanatory card. It's now really, really cheap thanks to two reprints over the last couple of months. Um, and it's one of the best generic Link 4s in the game. And finally, we have Bottle Sword Dragon to end games once we've broken the board and established our resource looping and the opponent can't come back. So that's the deck profile for my Orcust build. For upgrades, Orcust, this build, obviously, there are a number of more expensive cards that can go in. So obviously, Gearsu is a major one. That'll run you 25 to 30 pounds copy at the moment. Then Orchestrated Return, again, will run you about 10 pounds a copy at the moment. And they're the main ways you have of increasing the ceiling of this deck. Other cards are again the Selene and Selene access code top combo. Your standard cards like Infinite Impermanence. I just mention the same cards all the time because again there are some expensive staples that can just go in so many decks. Other a second copy of Fog Blade would be very very helpful for the deck as well because it means. And potentially some more Phantom Knights if you want to run that. A copy of Ancient Cloak would, could also be used. And finally, just again, the standard really, really good uh, going second cards. Your Triple Tactics Talents, your Evenly Matched, 
your Forbidden Droplets, your Lightning Storms. This deck is very good at going first or second because of the strength of its board breaking and its interaction. And those cards just make it even easier. I'm aware this is, again, not one of the cheaper decks that I've put out. Um, I, I did look at, think about cutting the Nibiru's, but I think Nibiru is just too good in this deck because of the way it just simplifies the whole board state. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that. And I will release another video soon.